And now in this video, we will, in, we will introduce the d orbitals, which are the L equals 2 solutions to the spherical harmonics. So when we talked about the p orbitals, we talked about how linear combinations of different p orbitals, different complex L equals 2 spherical harmonics, can get you the real p orbitals. Right, so remember we took com linear combinations of y1 plus and minus 1, and that was what defines the px and the py orbitals. So we can do the same exact thing here with the, uh, with the L equals 2 solutions, and then we'll see what we get in terms of the d orbitals there. I already have these written out just to save us a little bit of time. Okay, so let's take a look at what these things give you. So if you look at these, these are five different linear combinations. The first is the simplest because it's just a, it's just y20 by itself. So just after the equal sign, we're writing what this looks like in spherical coordinates. Notice for y20, this is 3 cosine squared minus 1. And then after that, we, are, we can convert this expression by using the definition of the spherical coordinates into something that involves the Cartesian coordinates, x or z, x, and y in particular. Okay, so then if we do this for y20, so this is l equals 2, ml equals 0, then we see that this ends up looking like 2z squared minus x squared minus y squared. Okay, and, and historically now this gets called dz squared, and this is the function that's shown down here. And we'll talk about the shapes of these once we're done talking about the linear combinations. Okay, so similarly if you take linear combinations of the L equals 2 and then m sub L equals plus and minus 1, plus and minus 1, then you get that these are equal to, these end up being equal to xz over r squared times yz over r squared. And now for obvious reasons, these get called the dxz and the dyz. And their, their corresponding polar plots are shown down here. And now the last linear combinations that we look at are L equals 2 with plus and minus 2 for m sub L. So m sub L equals plus and minus 2, plus and minus 2. And in this case, when you, when you go through and analyze this, what you get for this, this first one is you get x squared minus y squared and then over r squared and then xy over r squared. And so both of these have an obvious name, so this gets called the dx squared minus y squared orbital and this gets called the dxy. And the corresponding polar plots are shown here. Okay, so for all of these you can kind of clearly see where the naming of the d orbital came from when you express these in Cartesian coordinates. The only one that might have felt a little bit misleading up until now is the dz squared, because the dz squared is actually you know 2z squared minus x squared minus y squared. So it actually includes all of these. And this is the only one that just gets called this truncated version of itself. And now if we look at these, we see that four of them have pretty similar shapes overall, right? So we have dyz, dxz, dxy, and dx squared minus y squared all have these kind of, uh, you know, these quadrupolar-like shapes. So you have, for one notice, you have inversion symmetry now, which you didn't have with the p orbitals. So across the origin, you have minus, minus, plus, plus. Um, so this is a hallmark of even spherical harmonics. Um, and all of these have these, these sort of like four lobes, two, the yeah, two opposing ones have the same sign, the two, and then the two adjacent ones have different signs. So you notice if you go in a circle around any of these, these orbitals, then you'll find uh, you change sign several times, which tells you that there's some angular node in there. Uh, and then the only one that has a relatively unusual shape relative to this is this is the dz squared minus x squared minus y squared. Uh, because so this has these sort of strong lobes along the z direction, you know, both with positive now in this case. And then this 
sort of sat Saturn-like ring of negative down here. And so again, this still has inversion symmetry. If you flip this across the origin, you go from plus to plus. And if you flip across the origin in this ring, this, this ring is centered on the xy plane, you go from minus to minus. Uh, but this thing is oriented along the z-axis. It's the only one that's purely oriented along the z-axis. The rest all have some mixed axis like orientation. Okay, so once again, just like for the p orbitals, these are only polar plots. They are not taking into account any of the radial distribution part of this. And that is something that we will start talking about in the next video.